Simple Kicking with your host, James Harrison. This is the uh, 10th episode of the Simple Kicking show. And what better way than to bring in two of the best from the Big Ten Conference? We have Keith Duncan, kicker for the Iowa Hawkeyes, and Jake Penninger, kicker for the Penn State Nittany Lions. This is a roundtable discussion, so it's not a formal Q&A coming from yours truly. Instead, it's kind of us all just kind of hanging out here for the next 30 minutes or so. And I'll go ahead and get this started. Who are the best fans in the Big Ten? I mean, I would have to put Iowa and Penn State pretty close together. I, I actually really <laughs> I really like playing at Penn State. The atmosphere is super cool. Um, I remember when we played there my freshman year, we got absolutely killed. Um, but like coming out of the locker room, they have like chain link fence, like setting up, like going to the field and like their fans are like sticking their fingers through the fences. Um, so I thought that was like super cool. Um, I think anywhere in the big 10 is like super, uh, you know, special to play at the fans are awesome. Um, and I think that's awesome. Uh, kind of speaks to the level of, uh, the conference that we're playing in. Um, you know, it's, it's really cool just to play in a conference where every team is competitive. Yeah, I would. I would agree with him. I think Iowa, Iowa, Penn State. I know Nebraska's got a good fan base. I know they're always selling out games. Um, but all around, yeah, all around the Big Ten, you know, fans are fans are there, fans are loud. Um, Iowa, those night games at Iowa, though, those are uh, those are tough. You can really you can really tell um, the atmosphere by those fans. Iowa's got that really cool new tradition. Yeah. Yeah. The wave it's super, it's, yeah, it's really cool. Um, it kind of started, I think from a local, uh, mom on Facebook and she said, it'd be really cool if we started this tradition and we didn't even know about it until like the third game. And we saw like other teams waving to the children's hospital and the fans, and we were so confused. And then coach Ferentz probably, he, he finally got the, uh, the memo. Um, but yeah, we were so confused on what was going on at first. And then, uh, we, we figured out what was going on and then we joined in with the waving. Um, and it, yeah, it's really cool. We're really active with, with the kids up in the hospital. Um, the Ferentz family, um, they have a special place in their heart for, for that place as well. Um, but yeah, it's, it's really cool just to interact with those kids as much as possible. Uh, we, we make their day better and they make our day better. Um, so, you know, letting them know that, uh, you know, we're thinking of them during a game is really special. And that sounds like it's not only a home team tradition. Jake, have you played at Iowa and done the same wave? Yeah, this year. Um, what is it, at the end of the first quarter? Is that what it is? Yeah, yeah first quarter. Yeah. yeah, we did, everybody. That was a cool thing, man. Everybody had their their phones going. You know, it's just like a huge break, and everyone just takes their time to look over at the hospital and give those kids waves. It was cool. Well, there's a lot of kids that obviously look up to you guys once upon a time, you guys were looking to play college football. Why did, like, Jake, you're from Iowa. Did you ever have aspirations to play for the Hawkeyes? Or how did you guys end up choosing your schools? I mean, I, I'm an hour and a half, hour 40 away from, from Iowa City. Um, grew up, I, growing up, I watched a lot of Hawkeye football. Um, I think I was, I'm, I'm, I live a lot closer to Ames. So I think a little bit more, I grew up a little bit more of an Iowa State fan, but I still followed Iowa a lot. Um, and then as I got older in high school, um, started thinking about Iowa a little bit. You know, I really, it was it was a school that would be cool to play for, obviously in your home state, but it was never a school that I looked at. And I was like, you know, that's, that's the school I really want to play for or anything like that. I didn't really have a dream school. Um, but yeah, Iowa, Iowa, I would have, I would have liked to play that. That was a cool, cool little, uh, camp and everything that I did there um obviously being from there but it's just weird how it works out so yes, I think we have some teammates that play with Jake too Riley um, yeah it's funny how it all plays out I guess like I'm from North Carolina and I ended up exactly here, so, and I had no idea where Iowa even was <laughs> <laughs> like I was gonna go to a small school in Furman or Furman a small school of like 3,000 people and then I got a call one day it's like hey you want to try to walk on here I was like yeah sure and it kind of played its part did you answer that phone call or did you let it go to voicemail because it was some iowa area code <laughs> no it was actually it was after the rose bowl obviously like iowa didn't play too hot in that christian mccaffrey kind of had his way with with us but 
Um, they were like ranked like number four, number five in the nation. And yeah, their lineback- linebackers coach DM'd me on Instagram. Um, he's like, Hey, give me a call. I was like, um, okay. I was like super confused. Um, but I gave him a call and he's like, yeah, we've, uh, there's actually a, a punter who used to punt at Iowa. His name's Jason Baker. He lives in Charlotte now and saw me kick and kind of threw my name into that discussion with, uh, with the Iowa coaches. And that's kind of how um, I got my name through there. And I guess that's, that's kind of how it started. Recruiting is weird, isn't it? It sucks. <laughs> And it also like for kickers, it, it kind of depends on like the year that you come out in. I know like some schools, they don't scholarship kickers every year. Um, like one of my, one of my best friends, JD, he's a kicker for Purdue. He was one of like two kids that I, I knew pretty well that got a scholarship to a division one school. So it was like, it's tough nuts sometimes for, for the years. Um, I know like, like some other years you'll have um, most, most guys get scholarships. So it's definitely different. If you're a kicker getting a scholarship, dude, you only need a kicker, what, once every three, four years? So they're not handing them out left and right. I mean, it just – it really depends on what school. And for any kicker, that's probably where you, that's probably where a bunch of kickers you see bounce around because it's like there's not many offers out there. And once you get one, it's like, I mean, what else am I going to do? You know what I mean? I don't want to – I don't want to take chances somewhere else if there's an opportunity here. Yeah, I know. It's, it's actually pretty unique. Like for Iowa, I think it's like the last 12, 13 years – every single starting kicker has been a walk-on. So that's a pretty cool stat, pretty interesting stat too. Um, so, you know, even if it's very, it's very crazy. Um, so, yeah, I mean, now it's like, if you have a walk-on shot at like a D1 school, like maybe just put your foot in the door and compete for that starting job. Um, I'm fortunate, like with Iowa, they, like I was a f- true freshman walk-on and they had a scholarship kid and four other kickers and they treated me, um, like with respect and fair is like just, just the other kickers. So I was fortunate in that aspect, but yeah, it's definitely, you see a lot of walk on kickers nowadays earning scholarships, which is awesome. Um, but yeah, even a scholarship at a, at a high school is like, that's awesome. It's huge. <laughs> they scholarship kickers at Penn state, don't they? Yeah, they, uh, they do. Um, yeah, it was just a weird, yeah, it was a weird scenario. How I got there. Um, I, my going into my senior year, I, I really didn't know if I wanted to kick. I really wasn't doing a lot of kicking in high school. Um, and then towards the end of my junior year, I kind of transferred over and started kicking more. Um, and then I went to a bunch of camps heading into my senior year. I went to a, like a satellite camp at Northern Illinois. Um, and there were some other schools there like Arkansas, Penn State was there. Um, and then I did well at that, at that camp. And then they got a hold of me from there on out. And that's how, that's how I got all the way out here. Weird. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. Bizarre bizarre i didn't even really follow penn state at all ask any uncle or gosh your parents your friend well how did you meet your wife oh well let me tell you about that crazy story i think kickers have a very distinct similarity i mean the two those kinds of stories but i think it i think it goes another level of just total luck and timing because you know at the end of the day you can kind of figure out which girls you're going to date because you know they they're on campus or you know to go to high school, but this deal is completely different. Oh, it's bizarre, man. It really is. You never know where you're going to end up. It could change in a matter of a day, too, which is crazy. Well, another thing that's weird, guys, is you guys aren't gearing up for a weekend, a game this weekend. No, it's uh, it, it feels weird because obviously the Big 12, SEC, ACC, they're all they're all playing games, and it's we should be getting ready to play our first game in what a week, not even or something like that. So. It's really bizarre. It's going to be very, very weird this fall, having no football to look forward to, which sucks. But it's beyond it's beyond anything that we can control. But yeah, it's 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 a weird situation. Yeah, as I say, like Jake said, it's like something that we can't really control. Um, but like for us, our coaches have kind of like pounded into our head. Like we get an extra off season, sort of. So that's that's kind of something to look forward to. Um, but yeah, it is definitely tough seeing like other schools play uh, while we can't play. Um, Cause then you think about the impl- implications for next year. Um, you know, are we, are we actually going to play in the spring? Is there going to be two seasons in one calendar year? So it's going to be very interesting to see, um, I guess what the big 10 decides, but again, it's, it's kind of out of our control. We just kind of have to roll with, with what's given to us. So, I mean, are you angry? Are you upset? Or are you, 
whatever. I mean, I can't control it anyway. Like what's the, what was the emotion when you guys first found out about this? I, I kind of like felt it was coming. I mean, they, they, we got it. We got back up here all summer and we're working into camp and stuff like that. And I figured, you know, maybe we could ease into some games and maybe have a couple and then maybe it gets canceled or something like that. Um, and then once all the news started coming out early, early during camp, it, it just didn't look good. Um, so I kind of saw it coming and then, yeah, once I found out, you know, it's just, it sucks. It's depressing. You know, you go up there and you, you work all off season for stuff like that. And then stuff comes up where you can't control it and decisions are made that are out of our control. But I think, I think you just got to keep, keep your head up, keep thinking positive um, and just move forward. Like he said, you get another off season, you got to take the pauses out of it and just look at that. Yeah. There's definitely a lot of like mixed emotions there. Um, but yeah, I think, I think we definitely saw it coming. There were a lot of red flags uh, whether it be no season or half a season, there's definitely something that I thought was going to happen. Um, so there was no, not really much shock when they uh, finally came out and said, you know, we're going to suspend our season for now. Um, but yeah, there's like anger, sadness, but then you have to, again, um, I like looking on the bright side of things. Like there's so much more that you can accomplish right now. Um, like, let's say I'm having a problem with my follow through or whatever. Like I have time now to fix that, which is, which is great to think about. Right. Well, this is a, a big 10 round table with Jake Penninger kicker for Penn state and Keith Duncan kicker for the Iowa Hawkeyes. You guys know how to deal with the mental ups and downs. And what we're talking about is, is just things we can't control, which is uh, this, this pandemic and you know, the big 10 conference canceling the, the, the season for the fall and postponing it into, into the spring. And I'm interested to know, like, you guys play in some pretty hostile environments and from a mental perspective, how do you deal with that? I think, I think Keith will agree. I mean, it's something that it takes a little bit getting used to at first, you know, I mean, once you get out there at first, it's, it's definitely a big jump from high school. Personally, like my freshman year, you know, going from high school to college, it, it took, it took me a little while to get my feet wet. Um, but once, once you go out there and, you know, you, you get your confidence up, then you just rely on your instincts and your training um, and just fall back on that. And I think the rest will sort itself out. Um, I think a thing that helped me was, you know, my freshman year, sometimes I would go into kicks and stuff like that. And I was too focused on the outcomes. You know, too many things are going on in my head. I was trying to, trying to be too technical at times instead of just going out there and, and trusting my training and just falling back on that and, living with the results either way um but the crowd and atmosphere I feel like after a while you you tend to block it out obviously there's some kicks and games where it's a little bit more pressure and stuff like that but I think that's you know Keith especially you know he's had he's had a lot of big big time kicks game winning kicks I think it's something you try to get up for though you're excited for that um because that's like your one one two three opportunities you get a game yeah for sure I think I've said this like multiple times, like I'm not the most talented kicker. I don't have a very strong leg. Um, I don't have the strongest leg I'll say. Um, but like my, I think my mental approach to kicking um, helps me out a lot with my game. Uh, like Jake said, like we have a big quote um, that we uh, spit around in the Iowa program. It's you don't rise to the occasion. You fall to the level of your, um, your workouts, your, uh, your training. Um, so I think that's, that's really big to think about. One thing that I, yeah, like true freshman year, I remember going out to my first field goal. It was like a little, little rinky dink, like 30 yard field goal. I made it, but like I remember stepping back and seeing fans behind the uprights for the first time. And I thought that was the craziest thing ever. Um, so I was not prepared for that, but it was definitely something that kind of was a shock. Um, so one thing that I, I did to kind of uh, react to that is I wrote down everything that I noticed that distracted me during the game. Um, so I wrote all those things down and I ended up coming with, um, you know, a script or a routine that I go through before games now. So I'm not distracted by those things when they, um, you know, come during the game. So I've got, I've got scripts, um, for home game, home night game, away, away night game, weather, um, just word for word. It's, it's like pretty detailed, but it's something that kind of puts me in a certain mindset that that'll allow me to succeed. Um, I have a start to the rep and into the rep and it's extremely detailed um, coming down to like shaking coach Francis hand after a field goal made. So that, that helps me out a lot. Um, and definitely 
was a huge difference from freshman year to senior year. You have a script? I have a script. <laughs> you have you have scripts, it sounds like. I, I have multiple. I have multiple scripts, yes. So <laughs> if you have a script and you administer it to somebody else, does that make you a physician so that you could prescribe one of the things that you do to help another guy? I mean, if, if you want to put it that way, I guess so. I mean, <laughs> yeah. So if it, like, like for instance, one of my scripts is like for a two minute kick and I'll start by saying like the ball is at, this is like all written down before a game, just theoretical situations. It'll start by saying like the ball's at the 20 yard line, um, be prepared for a field goal. Uh, once the ball crosses the 45 yard line, I get on the bike. Once the ball crosses um, our opponent's 40 yard line, it's like, I, I start to get some reps. Um, I th focus on my breathing. I am uh, cautious of the season ticket holder with the sun hat that screams very loudly. And then like more detailed uh, when I run onto the field, like I'm very loose on the sideline. I'm very loose. I laugh. I like have a good time. I joke with people. And then like, once it's field goal time, once, I step over once, once it's third down, I'm by the head coach. It's like time to get serious. So once I um, step over the, the white line, going to kick a field goal, serious faces on, take my steps back with pace. In my script, I like mention my holder and snapper. By so I'll say I, I nod to Colton. Jackson snaps the ball back and I like run to the ball with great pace. I follow through with conviction. Like there's, there's trigger words that I use in my script that I, that I think are really um, big and, you know, performance aspect. Um, and then like, I'll, I'll mention after the field goal goes in, I give a handshake to my holder, run off the field and give coach Ferentz a handshake. And that's the end of my rep. So that's kind of where the script goes. Um, a little brief overview of it, but there's a lot of different ones. <laughs> so this is uh, Keith Duncan. He's the kicker for the Iowa Hawkeyes. I'm showing a game clip right here. You, the score is 24 to 24, and I'm going to let you take it away from what you see on this YouTube. Can you guys see? Can you guys see this? Okay. Yep, I got it. I, I, yeah. <laughs> All right. So right here, I look through my uprights. I'm going to nod to cold, and I go with pace, conviction to the ball, and then follow through through the uprights, and then we celebrate. It's a game. Big like, time going, going into that kick is, is kind of what makes you make the kick. How many times have you practiced that celebration though, Keith? <laughs> Arms open. You look like you look like Ronaldo, like a calm Ronaldo after uh, making a, a a penalty kick. <laughs> no, I really thought I really thought that there you was like a moment. flag, or like a like we jumped or something, and that would have sucked like really bad. Because if I was doing that, and then I had to, you know, go make a fifty-three yarder now. And I missed. That would have been terrible. But, <laughs> no, I mean, it's fun. We have a really big uh, rivalry with Nebraska. Uh, it, it's like our last two games have come down to a game-winning field goal. Uh, we've beat them the last five years. That's a big one. Um, so, you know, it, it's fun. It's a rivalry. And, it, yeah, it was the last game of the season, and we kept them out of bowl, bowl eligibility. So we had to do something fun there. So what was the excitement and the feeling like beating your rival Nebraska? Yeah, that was that was crazy. Yeah, I had a I had a kick my freshman year to beat Michigan and they were number 3 uh ranked overall at the time and the fans rushed the field and, uh, and everything. And that was awesome. But Nebraska was I was like very locked in and I I was going through my routine so I remember every single thing that happened at an away field like when the crowd is just silent right after that's that's very special and that's awesome. There's nothing more than uh Nothing more that I'd want than that. That is so cool. Jake, is there any kicks that come to mind that for you or any stories? For, for some against us. <laughs> oh yeah. Are you talking about like a celebration or what? What whatever you want to whatever you want to share. There's there's some eager listeners to that want to know what you, what you have in the vault of stories. You had some big kicks yeah. against us. Um so that was like a coming out party for me that, that game against Iowa. Um yeah, that was that was a special game. Um, hit, hit three field goals, I think. And then that point on the rest of the season, I think I was like maybe like 12 or 14 or something like that. Um, so that boosted my confidence big time. And that, that kind of got me back on track. Um, but yeah, those are, those are big time moments that like he said, he's got, he's got a routine. He's got a routine for kicks. Um, 
which which you got to have if if you're a kicker and you don't got a routine that you can stick to, you're you're going you're winging it every time, and that's not good. I feel like you should have something you can stick to every time, um, something you can fall back on, and ultimately, like I said earlier, not 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 thinking about it too much and treating each kick like the same. So, Jake, what I have pulled up here is oh, a, that's a long time ago. This is a long time ago. <laughs> this is back in 2018, man. Two years ago. My gosh, that's a long time ago. This is Beaver Stadium, Happy Valley. The Ohio State is ranked number four. Penn State ranked number nine. Take it away. What were you thinking? What were you feeling? What was this like? Um. Yeah that 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 game was big because that was the first game. You know that that's where that that was that was like playoff implications and. You know, you're down there on the field. You got Kurt Herbstreit. You got all these ESPN dudes. You got every camera there. And I was a little nervous before that game because this was probably my fourth game of my career, fourth or fifth game. Um, and coming into that, I was like I said, I was struggling. And I hit I hit one field goal early, and then I had a 46 yarder that I completely, completely just you know I I followed through way too, too much to the left got through it way too much. Um, so this was a kick I was looking at where I need to get back on track. Um, give us some, give us some more points to, to feel comfortable. Like I said, this was a big game. Um, but you know, like, like I was saying earlier, just taking each kick the same and just, and just trying to rely on my instincts and training. Okay. So all you're relying on is your instincts and training. This is a big game. And you said you were just coming out or you were currently in a mental slump. Yeah. Um, the whole season I was in, in this game in particular, um, all three of my kicks, I think, were from the right hash that game. Um, and the, the field goal that I had before that was a 46 that I completely um, – I pulled to the left. So I wanted to make sure that I was falling through more straight and things like that. Um, and that was a big kick. That, that got my confidence back up, and I felt ready for the rest of the game. Um, actually, the, the end of that game, I think it was like 20 – it was I, it, I think it was tied or something like that um or they were up one I think it was like 24 23 and we were driving with like a minute left and I was I was getting ready you know I was like shit, shit man this is you better start warming your leg up because otherwise I don't know I don't know what's going to happen but um game didn't end the way we wanted it to, but so. you had a couple opportunities in the cotton bowl this past year didn't you oh uh, yeah I had I had one kick that game it was it was I don't know like third quarter it was kind of a close game, um, but nothing, nothing too crazy where there was there was big implications on it. Um, just went out there, and that was just a fun experience to go out there and ex- experience something like that. So here you are. We've got it's thirty-five to thirty-three, third quarter. I was at this game, dude, at Cowboy Stadium. Oh, you were, and oh, dude, yes, I was there. My brother, my brother-in-law is a huge. Nittany Lions fan, really? and he loves them so much that he didn't let me and LSU Tiger and Rice Al join him because I didn't bleed. I didn't bleed the per, the the blue that you guys bleed. So I I I, I uh, scalped some tickets and was able to go. Memphis kicker was on fire. Memphis ki- uh, Riley's good. Riley, he's very good. Yeah, you know, you, you, Riley you, Patterson. Kick- yeah, he's very good. Memphis was a good team, but. I think he had like five field goals, got the MVP. When you're when you're warming up and you're you're kicking against kids, you know, when when the kickers get out there and they get a kick out and you know, warm up and you get the C, that kid was he was money and he was backing it up to about sixty five. Mm-hmm. Indoors, you know, you can you can get a hold of it a little bit better, but he was backing it up and he was just hitting, hitting, hitting. And I was like, man, this kid is, this kid is really good. And he came out and hit like five field goals, a couple big ones too. If you were, if you don't, if anybody doesn't, who's listening, doesn't remember this game, Memphis was a dog in this fight. I mean, their quarterback Memphis was a good team oh, this year. Dude, Yeah. They were threading or last year. Their, their quarterback was threading a needle. Obviously Penn state is much bigger. And I, I, at least the biggest difference was the offensive line and the defensive line, just the, the size discrepancy clearly favoring the Nittany Lions. Dude, it's 35 to 33. There must have been some pressure on this kick. This is a 45 yarder from the left hash. Walk me through the mindset, what was going on before, what were you thinking, what were you feeling, and what was this like? I didn't even I don't even remember what the score was when I went out there, I don't think. Um 
I was kind of just focused on on doing what I had to do. But I think what happened was I, I was I was warming up into the net and it got to be like second down and it was it was like back to back penalties. So it, it kept backing up and backing up. And I was like it was like third and long. So I was like, OK, I'm going to go. I'm going to go stand over here by coach and get ready. Um, and then he was mad. My, my coach was mad because they we, – we got some penalties. And then the third down play, it was like a two-yard drop pass. And he was mad. He just – he said field goal and then went out there. Um, it's weird, though, because those NFL uprights at, like, a, the stadium, it's either they're, they're taller or something, but, like, you go out there and you kick on them for once and it's like – it takes it takes a little bit getting used to and that whole week I really wasn't kicking amazing in practice I was kind of just like man man like it was it got to the point where I had to go out like an hour and a half early one of those practices to get a little bit used to the uprights because it, it, it was a little different um but yeah just resort back to the training trust my instincts it was the end of the year um just just enjoyed it more than anything. That's so cool. So you're having fun right here. I mean, you look loose. Yeah, it, it kind of faded. My the, the, I remember that kick, it kind of faded right. It started out straight, um, and it kind of faded right um, and then squeezed in there. But, yeah, it was it was a fun time. Would you call this an A ball or a B ball or a C ball? I got a hold of it. Like, it, it had power. It had distance, but it wasn't end over end. It was kind of like an X ball almost. It really wasn't flush. It really wasn't end over end. Um, but as long as it goes through, I mean, that's all you can ask for. Exactly. And that's pretty fun to see coach Franklin get all fired up, huh? Yeah. Yeah. It was, uh, it was a big game. It was, it was nice. It was nice to win that. So we we got through some, some kicking stories for, for both of you guys. You, you'd mentioned earlier seeing guys warm up before the game. Have you guys talked b- before in a pregame before Keith and Jake just saying, Hey man, what's going on? Or is it something that you guys don't typically like to do? I think we talked a little bit, um, I know I, I, I spoke to Blake a little bit, their punter. He's from Georgia and I was from North Carolina. So I, I said something there. Um, sometimes like other, like most of the times we don't even, we're not even on the field the same time as other kickers. So there's, there's some uh, changes there. Um, but, but yeah, I think we mentioned, mentioned something to each other. Yeah. I think when we played, when we played at Iowa this year, when because usually you go out, you warm up, and then you come back out, you put all your stuff on, and go back out and kick a little bit. And I think when when we were both back out there on the field, you know, the whole team was out there, and it was getting a little more closer to game time. Um, but yeah, I think we might have said something, and then um, after the game, you know, said some things. But it's always interesting and stuff to 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 watch watch kids and warm ups, and you know see how they're hitting and things like that. It's always interesting. It's not like us kickers really get to interact really before the game much. We're kind of doing our own thing. You've got your script. You're, you're just, you're out there warming up and trying to, trying to get it together, get your roots in and, and get some, get set in for, for the game. And, and afterwards, everyone's kind of in a rush to either, man, we just lost or man, I can't wait to go celebrate with the guys. So it's not really a time to, to hang out. So that's why this is cool to have a little round table for us to all kind of hang out now that we're in a in an extended off season, so this was uh this was really cool to have you guys on. And uh, again, this is Jake Penniger. He's the kicker for the Penn State Nittany Lions, and and Keith D- Duncan for the Iowa Hawkeyes. And here we have a couple more minutes left. And this might be a tough question. And I'll start with you, Keith. Is, is there one kick that you wish you, you know, you, you get white knuckled and you just, God, I wish I had that one back. Yes, I do. It was uh, Illinois. Um, it was my second field goal of the game. I can't remember the specifics, but I remember um, it was later in the second quarter, and I thought, like, all right, we're probably going to run the clock out here. They had the ball, um, and it, I think it was an interception or something. We got the ball back quick, and I was like, no way. We're going to have a shot at a field goal. So I wasn't going through my routine. I wasn't prepared for it. And then all of a sudden, we have a shot at a field goal. I think it's like a 46-yarder. So it's no chip shot. Um, and I go out and miss it. So that, that, that's the one field goal. I think I missed five this year. And that's the one field goal that I'm not okay with the other misses. I shot the shot that I wanted to, I was perfect on my routine. I just missed. I was wrong. So I'm, I'm okay with those misses, but that one that I wasn't ready for that's, that's kind of stuck with me for a while. Luckily I had six field goals that game. So I had some more opportunities to kind of come back and, um, prove myself our, our last, last play and that second quarter was a field goal. So I had a 45 yarder going into halftime and I made, which is big. Um, but yeah, that's, that's something that, that I'll kind of uh, remember. But it sounds like you got it together for the next kick. 
Yeah, definitely. Yeah, got it together. Um, it's a one rep mindset. Uh, you never know how many reps you're going to get in a game. Could be one, could be 18. Um, so having having that mindset of there's always going to be another rep is huge. Um, for me, yeah, specifically that routine, having that in my, in my routine, my script is, is really big. Um, cause like freshman year, Keith, I definitely would not have been able to, to, uh, keep that off my mind and, and it would have impacted the next kick. It's a lot of growth. Jake, you're, you're just finished your sophomore year. You've got a, a handful of, of missed kicks cause you've made the, the, the majority of them. So out of the few that have not crossed through the, the plane of good, which one of the no goods do you wish you could have back? Um, I think, I don't. I think it would probably be my freshman year when, when you pull up that Ohio state clip, it was a 46 yarder and mentally I really wasn't there mentally. I was, like I said earlier, I was too focused on too caught up in the moment, too focused on, on the stage and too focused on me, you know, making it and worrying about the outcome instead of me just focusing on what I can control. Um, and it, it, it was pushed way left. And I, that was a kick I look back on, you know, I think that if I would have relaxed, you know, got my bearings and, 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 and focused on it, that, that it would have played a role because we lost by one point. Um, you know, there, there's other moments in the game where we could have capitalized, but that that's a kick that I look back on that, that I wish I could get over again. Um, but like he said, I think um, one play mentality, that's the biggest thing you can have as a player, especially a kicker, because, you only get so many opportunities a game, so many opportunities a year. Um, you can't let one bad kick, one bad something dictate everything else. Otherwise, you're just going to you're going to go out there and you're going to perform worse. And that's where it sounds like for both of you guys, there's been a mental progression in your game. Right. If you were to pick one of the following three, where do you guys think that you have progressed the most? Have you progressed the most on the mental part of the game, your technique? or your leg strength since you've been in college? Yeah, it's, it's 100% mental for me. Uh, I think one of the biggest things that I kind of thought of freshman year when I went out to kick was I hope I don't miss. And that's the complete wrong mindset. And now this year it's, I hope I get another opportunity. Um, and I think opportunities, like I'm like really big into trigger words. I think opportunity, that word right there is huge. Um, you can do so much with an opportunity. Um, you just have to capitalize on it. So yeah, flipping that mindset again was, was really big. I think the mindset, um, the mindset's the biggest part for me as well. I think over the the past year and a half, especially I've, I've tried to do some things technically to clean up my approach um, to make it more fluid and consistent, which has also helped. But I think the mindset overall, um, the mental aspect of the game is the biggest thing that, that I've learned and I've, I've grown with. And I think, Honestly, that's probably the most important aspect you can have. There's no doubt. Nick Novak is a friend of mine, and he he shared that his trigger word, Keith, was balls of steel. And as we finish this podcast, this has got three seconds left. It's number three, Michigan versus Iowa. And you come to the party and you spoil the Wolverines season. I remember watching okay, that in I high a, school. I got geez. a little fun fact for you. Yeah. Yeah. It's actually, I've, I've had a lot of people say that, but like there's actually, it's, it's super funny if you go back. So they iced, they asked me when they came onto the field for the first time, first time they had 10 people. They called the timeout. We went to our sidelines. They came back and they still had 10 people. So they definitely messed up. <laughs> um, Cause number 14 here kind of gets up and he was pretty close to blocking it. But yeah, this is my true freshman year, and I was definitely nervous. <laughs> Reed Ferguson, <laughs> the long snapper for the Buffalo Bills, when I shared his first NFL snap, the time left on the clock, the quarter in which it was, the opponent, mm -hmm. I asked Reed, what was that like? And he said, I was crapping my pants. <laughs> when you say you were nervous, what do you really mean? This happened so quick. I, I mean, I just, I don't even remember it. I just remember kicking it. And then I was talking to Samantha Ponder on the side of the, the field. So, I mean, I kind of passed out on the, the pile on, under the dog pile. That's, that's one thing that I'll never do again is slide on the ground. Um, but yeah, it was definitely one to remember. Uh, it was, it was a lot of fun. 
uh, we were really, really big underdogs and it got us into bowl eligibility. So that was big for us. And we got to knock off an undefeated team. Mindset, scripts, having fun. Some of the things that we talked about. Is there anything that I, that I missed out that didn't fit the script for you, Jake? Or anything that you wanted to bring up that maybe I didn't talk about? I mean, most kickers, it's, it's everybody's got uh, you got to have the same mindset. You know, there's dudes out there that can go and kick an 85 yard field goal or whatever, but you get out in front of a big game, what well, it, it doesn't matter. There's a lot of dudes out there that can kick, but it takes a special it takes a special um, gift and a special person to be able to go out there and do it when it matters and be able to have the mental aspect of it down. Yeah, I also think that's a cool thing, like having this like round table, um, like me and Jake haven't talked a lot, but like now, like I've learned so much from like what he said and so much from what other kickers that I've talked to have said. So it's really cool uh, doing that and learning from um, a, lot, a lot of the guys. Well, you guys were kind enough to come join and I really appreciate it. I'm learning as much as you are. And as coach Thomas McGahee, who's the special teams coordinator for the New York Giants says, whatever you give away it really makes you grow. And here you guys are rivals in conference rivals who are here to help each other through historic times. And as a result, we are 40 minutes or so into this podcast and we all three got a little bit better. So I really appreciate you guys joining. We got to do it again, dude. And maybe, maybe we got to do it on a game week, maybe this spring, you know, just get you guys on a, on a little two minute podcast to say, Hey, Keith, I know what makes you miss. Hey, Jake, <laughs> I know how to get in your head. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. That's what I'm talking about, especially if there's no fans. Especially if there's no fans, uh, we can get some trigger words. Yeah, <laughs> and I'll, and I'll, I'll, I'll share one more funny. Uh, John Carney was on, on a, an earlier episode, and he said that, and this is kind of kicker in our kicker world, which y'all, y'all I think, will find fun. They called the epic onside kick between the Saints and the Colts in that Super Bowl. Uh, you guys were probably in middle school or, or high school when it – well, probably middle school when it happened. It was in uh, like 2009, I believe. A heartbreaking game. Heartbreaking game if you're a Colts fan. Well, Sean Payton calls the onside kick. So Thomas Morstead goes up to Pat McAfee and goes, dude, I'm going to send this kickoff into the third – I mean, whatever he said, he's like, I'm going to kick this way out of the end zone and trying to keep everything normal. Keith, like you talked about, and the rest is history. The onside kick was executed. So little kicker, kicker talk there. We had a little bit of kicker talk here on this big 10 round table, Jake Penninger, Penn state. Good luck this off season. Good luck this season. Keith Duncan, keeping it cool over there in Iowa. Thank you so much to you both for joining. This was, this was a lot of fun. Oh, yeah. Appreciate you having me on, man. If you enjoyed the content, join the community by subscribing to the Simple Kicking channel below or drop a like and maybe a comment. It would be really cool to hear from you. Also, you'll find Simple Kicking on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and yes, even TikTok.